make a big decision in your life? Like, how do you make these really important decisions? Like what classes I take and where I go to college and, you know, who I date and what I buy and what I do. Like, these are decisions that you can face on the daily, but they're also like really important and they can also be a little bit paralyzing if you don't know how to make important decisions in your life. So today I'm going to break down with you exactly like step by step how you should be making big and important decisions in your life so that you can move forward with confidence in your decisions. Hey babes, it's your life coach Abby J and let's talk about how to make big, big decisions in your life because I teach that teens, you are in this decade of decision from about like 15 to 25 or even like, you know, 12 to 22, like you are making critical life decisions from where should I go to school? What classes should I take to, should I buy this car? Should I buy this car? You know, where should I live? Like so many things are happening. And so how do you navigate that successfully? Because a lot of teens can become paralyzed with the magnitude of some of the decisions that you're making. So here we go. First of all, don't make it a big deal. Does that surprise you? Is that so weird of me to say? But here's the thing. When we're like, oh my gosh, here, I'll use a car example. Oh my gosh, I'm going to buy my first car and I really want to buy a good car and I want it to last me for forever and I want good mileage because I got to drive up to college and I just want it to be big enough and like, this is a really big deal because I'm going to hold on to this car for a really long time. And this is a lot of money. Like, whoa, this decision of like buying a car can just get bigger and bigger and bigger until it feels like a, like a monstrosity. And it becomes so big that we don't even know where to start. And it becomes really paralyzing. So let's not make it a bigger deal than it is. And I, I don't say that to diminish your choice or to diminish, you know, the, the opportunities that are coming your way, but just like, let's not make a big deal. Sweet. You get to buy a car. How amazing is that? Next, it's really important to remember it's not right or wrong. It's a choice. Um, I get this one all the time and I get like, this might scare a lot of teens, but, um, so I got married at 22, which is really young and still in that like decade of decision. And I remember a lot of my friends getting married around that same time. And some of them were like, I just don't know. I just, I want to make the right choice. I want to make the right choice. I don't want to make a wrong choice. And honestly, you have to step back and say, you know what? It's not a right or wrong choice. It's a choice, especially if we're going into this very educated and you're going to follow the other steps that I'm going to teach you you're past the point of knowing like, oh, is this morally right or wrong? And now at this point, it's just, it's a choice. And so I think about that a lot, especially when it came to like choosing to marry my husband. I felt good about it. I prayed about that decision. But at that point, it's not like this is a wrong decision or this is a right decision. It's I want to make this decision. And so let's take the morals out of non-moral things, you know, cause there's like, don't get me wrong. Like as a Christian woman, there's definitely right and wrong in the world, but we're usually not talking about that. We're talking about like, is it right or wrong to buy the red car? Or is it the right or wrong choice to buy the blue car? It's just a choice, honestly. So let's not make it right or wrong because that's going to add so much incredible pressure to it because now it becomes like a spiritual, physiological, just like bigger than it is. So we're not going to make our problems or our opportunities in front of us bigger than they are. And we're going to remember it's a choice and not, it's not necessarily right or wrong. Um, especially when it comes to like taking a new job, people are like, I just don't want to make the wrong choice. It's just a choice. You know what I mean? And we can work through that choice once we make it. So to help you even get to that point of knowing, okay, this is this is the choice that I want to make. You've got to gather a reasonable amount of information. Now I say reasonable because we live in a world where the knowledge of the universe is at our fingertips. And I'm the worst at this. Like I'll sit down and watch a movie with my hubby and I'll pull out my phone and I look up the ratings and who's in it and what movies they've been in, what uh, Rotten Tomatoes said about this movie. Like there's so much information that sometimes it can really 
um, really sway us and change our opinion if we gather too much information or if we gather too little. So let's gather a reasonable about um, amount of information so that we're not overwhelmed and we don't go down this rabbit hole of like, well, I can't make a decision yet because I don't know all the facts that are out there. Because guess what? There's probably a hundred plus websites exactly on this type of car that you wanna buy. And there's a hundred reviews of why you should buy it. And there's a hundred reviews of why you shouldn't. Let's take the top ones. Let's take the top concerns, the best features about this car, the worst features about this car. Okay, make decisions off of that. And one thing that I love to do, I've done this my whole life and it has served me so well, is to make a pro and cons list. So literally take out a piece of paper, you know, and you would just write down like, draw it in half, pros over here, cons over here, pros of this car, gets great gas mileage, it's the perfect size, I love that it's red. Um, you know, it's, it's in my price range. Cons of this car. Um, people say that, you know, the doors are easy to break or that it's not got the best safety rating. Like, you just go through your list and, you know, with your reasonable amount of information, you list your pros and your cons and then you make your choice. And remember, it's not right or wrong. When it comes to making an important decision, I think it's really important to follow your gut. And that's like red on red. <laughs> um, it's important to follow your gut. And for me, when I say gut, as a religious person, you know, that's what I feel like God is telling me to do. That's what I feel like I feel is best for me to do. Um, and so whether or not you're religious, you know, that just that feeling of like, this feels good to me, or this feels like a logical choice. And sometimes that feeling is strong. And sometimes that feeling is just like, yeah, I want to do this and it seems like the right choice. So I would trust, like have enough trust in yourself to just follow your gut and to follow those promptings. And if you've gathered a reasonable amount of information and you've made up your mind and your gut agrees with that, let's go for it. Okay, now this one is like the icing on the cake, especially when it comes to living with the decisions that you made, is to empower the decision you make. Now, talking on like an extreme example, so there's one of my favorite quotes um, by, oh man, I am blanking. So I'll, I'll like find the source and put it in below. Um, but they said, you could marry the wrong person and have them become the right person through your actions. You can marry the right person and have them become the wrong person through your actions as well. And I'm a firm believer in that. And I get that marriage is like, woo, crazy important decision. Um, but even like, let's go back to the cars. Um, like when I was in, I graduated as a senior, I'm going to college and I, I went to go buy a car and that was a really big decision for me. The most money I've ever dropped in my life and alone and just all these things. I followed these steps and then once I bought that car, I own it, it is mine. I now have to live with that decision. I decided from that moment forward, like that was the car for me. And I wasn't gonna think about the other cars that I was about to buy. I wasn't gonna think about my second best option. I was just going to love my car. And that's how it becomes the right decision for you is this is my choice and I'm going to love it. So for a lot of people, big decisions like a job. So you know what, you went for a job, you took the job offer. Okay, let's put everything into this to make this the right job for us. Now, that doesn't mean it has to be the right job for us for forever. Um, I personally, I took a job and within maybe three months, I knew that it was not the right job for me. Um, but then I could make another decision. Do you know what I mean? Which was to leave that job. So I want you to feel empowered in the fact that you can make a decision and make it the right choice for you. And you can also make a decision and have it be right for you for a couple months and then change your mind or have something else work out. So a lot of people get really paralyzed when it comes to decisions because they think I'm stuck. Like I've chosen this and I'm stuck. And it's like, you know what? You have everything inside of you to make this the right decision or to make this a stepping stone on your larger path. So I hope that you never forget that because if you can truly like remember that, like either I'm empowering this decision or I'm empowering this step on my path and I'm gonna change gears, 
you'll never make the wrong decision. Okay, babes, those are my tips on how to make incredibly important decisions in your life. And I get that this can range from like, do I take art or wood shop at class to do I buy a car? Do I date this young man? Like, do I move out to this college? Like so many things, but this system applies to all of those questions all of those decisions and truly like these are the steps that I followed as a teen and they're the steps that I follow now. So I'm wishing you the best of luck in those decisions. If you have one that you feel like I didn't touch on, please leave it um, down below in the comments section. If I see it, I'll try to respond and help you and point you to the right direction. Um, so babe, I'm wishing you the best of luck. I hope you'll like and subscribe to my channel, Abby Winslow, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. So Abby J out.